be like you're here and then you're here. Like there's a natural progression most of the time, unless there's like coordination. Sometimes you can of course have somebody just be on the back line to get like a pull or be sneak capping something, but most of the time there's a general flow of gameplay where like you need the kills, you need the power ups, you need the positions to uh, move through the map and get the kills and then get the uh, objective. So try and just stick to the basics, be in the best possible positions, um, try and get the power ups, try and get the power weapons. Those sort of just general things are um, probably what you can look out for to try and keep in check. Alright. Kills get the hills. That is true. Lowest damage on my team. I don't know if you can notice anything that would help. Okay, I got you, Kodiak. <laughs> my friend will. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Just let it play. Wait. Hello? Why can't I see... Is this Kodiak? I can't fucking tell. Where's the player? Dude, why is there no player? Dude. What is going on? Okay. Wow. Okay. I literally only pressed it one time, then all of a sudden, like, it was just gone. That was weird. I figured it had something to do with the outlines, but... Let's see. Okay, you're going nest. This is a camo start. Push through. Good flank. Yeah, you're not going straight for it. That's good. Okay. I thought you might get melted there. Alright, but one thing right off the bat is... I think a lot of people don't do this when... Um, they just have, like, a power weapon or a power up. And you might have just sort of not thought it fully through when you got this. But... People need to understand how to preserve themselves. Like, I will just say, you are more important. You staying alive with camo is more important than your teammate staying alive or not down here, and if red team even caps. Um, so that's just, like, number one. And to do that, that doesn't mean after you get that, like, maybe you want to thrust. That's kind of reasonable, but you don't want to just thrust out in the open where, you know, top gold can see you. If somebody was top mid or S4 or snipe, they can see you. Bottom mid, of course, they're down here. They're going to see you. Like, you need to think if you're going to go for it, like, get around this corner. Like, this is going to this is gonna be your safest, safest spot to go. Um, that's just, like, a little bit more of a heads-up awareness on your surroundings when you grab that. You don't want to just do that. You don't want to do that type of thrust, just throwing, your, like, throwing yourself out there. Because if you just grabbed it, maybe you even thrust it into the block to drop down here, or thrust it into here and then jump back up. Like, this is more ideal than throwing your just throwing yourself out there. Um, the only time you should ever do something this sort of commit, like, committal with that choice is if, like, somebody's LR, and there's only, like, one guy alive. And you know, like, I gotta just cut off this angle for whatever reason, or, I don't know, like... Most situations, you can just play it safe by, like, playing around this block, playing a little bit more slower once you get camo, because, like, that's the whole point of camo. Like, you stay camoed. If you move too fast, they're, like, they're just going to see you. That just kind of gets you killed right away. So you just took yourself out of the play, like, right, or, like, right away. You needed to understand your surroundings, or... It's not even necessarily understanding your surroundings in the moment. It's, like, you knew you were going to go for that camo. You needed to have, like, at least a somewhat of an idea of a play. It's like, maybe you still even drop where I tell you to drop, and that guy that's top mid still knows you're there. But if this is me and I'm going for camo, I get camo, and I, like, I, you know, clamber up, get out. Or I just kind of sit here for a second, get up top. Or if maybe you do want to go over that way, like, just don't thrust, drop, and then jump across. You just want to make sure you're preserving your life as best you can and utilizing what you got. Getting melted from top gold or LR. Yeah, and that's why I say that in this sort of situation, only one guy's dead, so you don't have that much information to go off of. And you weren't even really getting shot when you were going for it. Let's rewatch it again, real quick. Because this is, this is important. This is de definitely important when people have power-ups or weapons, and they have them in their possession, and they just kind of squander their life away. Like, let's see. You haven't gotten shot at all. At all. 
not a single time, and you used your thrust. So this still applies, where it's like, if you're in a gunfight, and you haven't been shot at all in a gunfight, there's like no real reason to even use your thrust. Like, use it as a safety net for a reason. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't want to just burn it. Or, like I said, if that is what you're afraid of, you need to do something. Like, with camo, you can't, like... You can't just thrust slide out with camo or like be in the top mid of the map and jump thrust away where all these angles... Because you're talking about getting shot from top gold, well... Uh, you're, getting, you're getting shot from top gold if you're even top dip area. That's just going to happen, dude. So, you got to be a lot more aware of what you're actually doing. What your actions really are. Because you're just... You're out of the play. You're out of the play right there. And on top of that, one thing, too, uh, to keep in mind, just a tip with camo is, like, you got to get to those walls. So after you thrust out, and you're kind of, like, right here, um, you want to probably just turn in. Like, you kind of need to understand open, like, open and closed sort of uh, avenues on the map. Like, this area over here that you're walking towards while you just thrust it out is a lot more open than if you said, like, say, turned in here towards this van. Like, this area over here is a lot more closed off and a lot more covered than if you go right. So that's just something to keep in mind. That's a little bit more of a smaller piece of information, but in general, you gotta be more aware of like what your plan of approach is. Spawn up. Check for shotguns, not there. Rust slide out. Okay, you're grabbing LR. Taking your time. Okay, so what I was afraid was going to happen, happened. Where you were the guy on LR, and you just instantly gave it up. So let's see. Go through, check for shoddy, not there, turn around, go back out. So... When you're in a position like this, I don't know why a lot of people do this. I really don't. I feel like a, even some top teams, just they just forget about it or just don't care enough. But it's so important. I feel like like that kill goes down. It's still a 3v4. And this is what happens. It's a 3v4, but that one guy makes a difference. Where you leave LR and you leave the glass area wide open and you push up. And it's not like instant kills. Like, you're not pushing up towards snipe and you're just cleaning house uh, right away. So even if they do spawn loop or glass wherever, it's perfectly fine. Like, it's not fine. Because those guys are still set up at blue off of their respawn. And then you leave it open, and then you're just getting shot at from that guy nest. And then this guy's just going to spawn behind you guys. Right there. That's the guy that just died. And now, since it wasn't a clean sweep... They're still all alive. You guys are now in not the greatest positions. Flower door, S4, not paying attention to S4, and then your benches. You're all just separated. And you don't have like one of the more important positions on the map that you currently just had. Because if you were sitting right here, that guy that spawned uh, back tram probably spawns bottom nest. And it's okay to kind of get that forward momentum with picks. Um, but you need to... Uh, actually sort of visualize it and see that it's actually happening. Because that one kill wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to just push right on through and kill this guy S4, kill the guy's bottom mid or top mid, and then start capping. And then it didn't matter if that guy spawns loop. That guy, everyone else being alive and everyone being separate, and then that guy spawning loop now does matter. And you were the one to block that spawn. And sort of force it. Especially if you have an LR. If you have an LR, like you want to keep your distance. You want to get those three shots. Or people one shot from just laying down some shots. Like you could have killed that guy. You probably could have seen this guy top mid if you just stayed LR. Like you want to provide support. This is like that complimentary angles. Or complimentary angles that I'm always talking about with like working with your teammates. It's like you don't really need to be right on your teammate's ass. And you can still accomplish the same thing if not more. Because you can visualize more. Watching him from glass. And just laying down shots and getting easy pickings. Because now you're just pushed up. You're not even working with your teammate. He's not working with you. And you just get cleaned up easily. So, again, recognize where you're at on the map. 
recognize like the situation of what's going on. You killed one person, but that's not a good enough reason to just full full on push. It's different. So here's what I'll also say too is there is still a difference between matchmaking and like full on 4v4 team with like communications. Cuz like there could be a situation where if I'm hearing my teammate tell me like leave LR, just push with me nest. All right, well I'm going to do that and then I have the expectation of like that guy that was S4 is my teammate and he's going to help me. Um, but you just don't have that kind of communication. So you need to have like realistic standards of what's going to happen in a situation. If only one guy's dead and that teammate's like S4 and you just left one of the more important spawns that are just, somebody's just going to shoot you in the back uh, when you're pushing up and you're not really doing too much, you're probably not going to have a favorable situation. So you need to keep those types of things in mind when you're making your pushes and doing literally anything on the map. Especially especially when you're leaving important positions, you need to like ask yourself in the heat of the moment, like, do I need to do this? And is it important if I do this? Do I need to do that? Like, is it better for me to leave or to stay? Like, you need to have that like quick decision, like crunch the numbers as quick as quickly as you can about like what you need to get done, and if you have, like, the things in place to get it done. Because what just happened right there, you didn't have the things in place to actually get it done. There could be other situations, other contexts, where you leaving LR to push Nest actually would work, but that situation where your teammate got, like, a free pick on posters is not so much, uh, so much the right play in that situation. So you spawn blue, you're walking out of the hotel. Um, it's okay, you're, you're getting some damage down, your teammates are actually cleaning up. You gotta start looking around a little bit. Oh, oh Kodiak, we talked about this, the peripherals, man, the peripherals! Just now noticed your teammate died, Dip, he's jumping up in front of your face, Kodiak, in front of your face! Step up the peripheral awareness, step it up. Same thing from the last time we talked about it. Step up to peripheral awareness. Dude, he's he's in the corner of your screen again. You gotta look you gotta snap to this a lot. You gotta be a, way more reactive. He's right there. He's right there. I'll even turn off the uh I will turn off the outlines because it makes it even easier in theater to notice it, but they're still there. They are definitely still there. Uh, what just happened? Where'd that guy come from? Yeah, he's just he's up there. A little late, a little late. Gotta see that guy. Oh, but he just did the full, like, 360. And that, that guy jumped from S4. Still alive, though. Oh, challenge him. No. Is this guy one shot? Oh, he's weak. Look, in these situations, this is why I always get really irritated when even if my teammate's weak, in situations like this, somebody's probably going to die anyway um, in these gunfights. So that's that's a fine pick right there, and you're one-shot, perfectly normal. Now you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to die. However, that guy's around the corner, and he's looking at your teammate. And this is how a lot of people need to, if you're trying to get better as a player, you need to recognize these, these situations where it's like, I don't care if I'm one shot, I need to just challenge to help my teammate. Because usually, even though it seems like logically it wouldn't happen that way, like you're one shot, there's a guy near you, like you're probably going to die. If he's looking at your teammate, like let me just show you. He's looking at your teammate right there. If at any moment right now, you just poke out and get a couple shots or get a shot into him and then peek around the corner and wait, that just throws people off. Like people freak out. People freak out when stuff like that happens, and it happens to everybody too. Like once you start to see multiple people um, on your screen, like it just kind of flusters people at most levels. So you need to take advantage of your teammate being scoped out right here, and he's living too. Like this guy is milking his life, and he's getting shots in too. You easily could have killed this guy and poked at any moment. Oh no. Oh no. That did not just happen, Kodiak. That did not just happen. I, you, he must have been on your screen and you literally just turned away. You literally must have turned away, I feel like. 
You gotta poke, you gotta poke, you gotta poke. Kodiak, we gotta talk about this, dude. We got to talk about this peripheral. We got it. He did not jump over. He just jumped right at you. He just jumped right at your face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, again, step it up. Be more aware that you need to be more aware. That's all I can say. There's no, like, clear cut, like, if you do this, it'll be better. Like, you just gotta step it up. Kodiak, like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I don't know if I have my monitor on. <laughs> oh man, if I saw that in my matchmaking game, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna be pissed. You thought he dropped? That's the point. You can think whatever you want to think, but you need to rely on like what you actually see. And you need to be, be, be prepared to be wrong. Especially when he's jumping right at your face towards you. You need to be like, oh, he actually is challenging. You gotta, you gotta be ready for that. that. That is an unacceptable death. No, nothing. No corrections about it. Unacceptable death right there. We're moving on, though. We're moving on. You spawned tram. You went to, uh, went to yard there. Okay, just wanted to see if Shotty was up. Okay, he hopped right in. Okay, so this is something that I feel like maybe the numbers were actually in your favor, and I just wasn't paying attention. Cause I need to see. Cause I feel like you being able to drop off top gold is just not normal. They might, yeah, the numbers were actually in your favor. Okay, this is actually fun. This is fun. But I hope you also are paying attention to the stop, uh, the, the clock. To know that camo is literally coming up. Oh no, don't bring your thrust like that. Oh no. He's alive though. There you go, just stay there, get your shields. Okay, yeah, you definitely need to get off of S4. Oh no. Playing your life well, though. At this point, I would say just get out, but... Yeah, okay, so one thing I'll say, a lot of that camo was just basically useless because of all the time that just got burnt. You had a lot of time to, like, do something. When you get your shields here, um, let's just see. So on the radar, you can look at your radar real quick and just see, okay, I have a teammate S at, like, at snipe. You need to sh just start branching out on the map. Camo is very much like a scouting tool. Doesn't mean you need to, like, scout out and then just instantly start going, going to town on people, trying to hit all your shots and just hold forward. Um, but I think going S4 is even not the worst, but you need to, like, I don't know, jump on this lamppost, get to, like, dip, or go top mid and then go dip. And then just start looking around. Like, you need to... Like, you... Normally, in games, you don't get opportunities to literally just stand in front of Flower Door and then, like, look dip and then look market. Uh, but you need to... Like, that's what you need to be doing with camo. Like, you need to utilize it and just get as much information as possible. Check hotel. Like, of course, you already looked Flower Door. Maybe you peek in. Look up top. Like, you need to be using it as a tool to just get info and then, if you can, get an easy pick on somebody. Um, so... That's kind of where this already begins. Like, you even start to look top mid here, like, instantly start walking out. There's a trip cap, too, so that's important. A trip cap with pressure is going to make, it's going to just, uh, like, multiply exponentially with how much pressure is on people. It's going to be so much harder for these guys to get back into the game. So, walking straight forward at somebody from, like, S4 is not what you want to be doing with camo. If I see that guy right there, I'm, if I saw him dip, I'm probably going up top and trying to wrap around. Because then, at that point, you can still work with your teammate. If that guy somehow manages to be one shot and you can just shoot one time, um, then that's okay. But you can't just, you don't, 
want to normally just be doing this where you're out in the open because if somebody happens to see you and you're right here, you're done for. And on top of that, your teammate, he's taking this gunfight, like he's chucking nades. He's not even, you're like, you're not even in his view yet. And you're holding right, like, out in the open, holding forward at them. So that's just going to get you weak like that. And now this camo is just not being used to its full potential. You had a lot of opportunities to utilize it. Utilize it uh, uh, better. Let's see how you use the rest of it. So now you're branching out a little bit. Drop right away. It's okay. It's an okay pick. Too dead. Yeah, I was going to say, you want to commit to that fight a little bit sooner. Especially if you got two kills. If you were paying attention to the kill feed, there were two kills. Um... Taking that gunfight, being up like two or three shots because you have camo is ideal. Just go for it. Just go for it a little bit sooner and that's probably a little bit of a cleaner fight, but you still got the kill. Camo is now um, out. You go back to the nest. This is a little too aggressive. Yeah, look at where your teammates are at and look at where you're at. At any point, even if you get weak right here, you are probably going to get chased down and most likely die. It can happen. Maybe you just are, like, you're thinking to yourself, like, we need to get back into this. I need to be aggressive. Um, but you can do probably a similar thing, just kind of hugging this corner. You can kind of just get the info and just wait for your teammates and just, like, look at your radar. Because if you waited right here and looked at your radar, you'd have, like, one teammate right behind you. And then you start moving, like, forward. Um... But it, it's a full 4v4, so this is just dangerous territory. A little lucky that that guy in LR didn't poke out, but you're still alive. And now you just dipped on your teammate who really does need the help. And you guys hadn't even captured Nest yet. So I think maybe backing down right here was fine to get your shields, but you need to still kind of remain or have the intention to still work with your teammate. Maybe you go around, clamber up, you start shooting these guys in the side. Um, this is what a lot of people do. They're in a situation, they just get back down, they kind of get cold feet, and they're just out of there. Where, like, you were just perfectly fine, full shields almost, right on this nest ramp, and you guys still don't have nest capped. Like, you still need to have this orientation, and also working with a teammate. Like, you don't have anybody in front of you right now. You don't have anyone to work with right now. You're just thinking to yourself, I'm gonna hop bottom mid. You're solo capping bottom mid, and... Things could be, like, we'll see if you cap this, but most of the time I feel like this would not just work out. You guys happen to cap it, but you guys are now trading kills. So, it worked out. Um, I just would, like, this is what I'll say. That's one of the more of the exceptions where something just happened to work out. I would say working with that teammate, like, S4, or, or Top Nest, and then... Or either, you know, still pushing further into the map and working with the guys he is shooting is going to make things just more efficient. That's more of like an efficiency play. It's kind of fortunate that things worked out. There was a guy that was dip that your teammates happened to kill over there. So that made things a little bit easier. Because if that guy didn't die dip, I think this play just looks even worse. Um, but now you're just kind of caught out in the middle after your teammates trade kills and unfortunate. If you hit your jump, you're probably not dead, but that's beside the point. Now, why did you thrust right in the bottom? Where are you at? Gosh. There you are. Okay, so in this situation, when teammates are dead, uh, um, two teammates even, I think, yeah. Two teammates are dead. This guy is one shot on blue truck. You are not stopping bottom mid. You just are not. You have plenty of time in the game right now. You need to get up top. You need to get up top and play your life. Try to get kills. Try to work with a teammate. And you don't want to burn your thrust here. So there's a similar situation where things are fine. You don't know what's going on exactly. But you're only thinking one thing, and that's like, I want to contest bottom mid, and then you just use your thrust. Like, that's not how you want to play the game. That's not how you want to play Halo 5. Is where you just think one thing, 
and you don't, and it's kind of like a shallow idea, like the shallow idea is like, I need to contest bottom, and then you're just like, throw yourself out it. Throw yourself bottom mid. That's what's going to get you killed here, is you thrusted before you even saw the guy right in front of you, and you're already down a shot, and there's three guys, since they have full setup, and your teammates are still on respawn, you're just going to get uh, focused as hard as you did there. So, that's just what's going to happen there. That's just what's going to happen. <laughs> Spawn yard, cap that. Got the class. Okay, camo's coming up, hopefully. Okay, you saw that guy at least, that's good. Peripheral, you saw it, you saw it. That's good. Oh yeah, you gotta play the side of the block. Oh, man, that's, that sucks, that sucks. There was a guy top gold. Let me see what's going on though. Because I feel like this is still a very preventable death. Even though it's unfortunate, it's still preventable, I would say. So, you got that guy weak, you backed him down, and you jumped out to LR. As soon as you see that guy's one shot there, and you get that kill, you don't need to move right now. What should I have done instead? Just lived hotel? Okay, I'll rewind real quick. So, like I said, you need to try to get up top and do your best to work with your teammate. That's what's, it's still, so this is what I'll say, is like, plays like this, or moments like this, are unlikely. They're, they are unlikely. Yo, no mom's allowed. <laughs> Thank you for the Twitch Prime, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the sub. You're welcome. Enjoy your emotes. So, there are going to be situations like this that just... Things are probably not going to work out in your favor anyway, but you should try... Maybe a little bit harder to... Already be thinking about the next play. So, they're capping nest. Um, maybe you even just go straight to bottom nest, or you... Go straight up to nest ramp to take this fight. Maybe you still lose this gunfight. Kodiak also gives the team one to Jivun. Jivin? Jivin? I don't know how to say that name exactly, but thanks for the sub. Thanks for the gifted. And welcome. Enjoy your emotes. So, it's all about, like, the numbers game, where I would say bottom mid, the probability of you stopping it and getting whatever kills that could be down here, there's probably going to be heavier influence here, like there is most of the time, compared to, like, somebody being top nest. Now, you're never just going to know that automatically, but um, that's just something to keep in mind. So, if this is me, I might just go back into hotel, check top gold, look top mid, and then take a fight nest. Or, maybe I'm feeling like I could actually stop nest. So, this is one thing that might help too, is just seeing where your teammate's at. Who is up? So, this teammate's right here. Why did it just do that? He's one shot on the truck. Let me see when you spawn. So, you spawn up and you see that. If I see this teammate's one shot right here... I probably automatically thrust slide, stabilize up to like nest ramp. Because this is what happens, is maybe you get here in time, and he might be already looking at your teammate, so your teammate might die. He might die first, but then that leaves you in a fair 1v1. You just take the fight right to this guy, and you maybe, you maybe kill him, maybe you don't. But that's like a piv that you need to try and go for, because this is more reliable. Like This is a, a, like probably a true 50-50 compared to... You guys being down in numbers and then trying to stop bottom mid. Um, and maybe even you go nest ramp and he starts shooting you first and then your teammate can shoot that guy nest ramp. I don't know. That's just like possibilities of things that could happen. But he died instantly. Um, but you just didn't even give yourself even a fraction of a moment to think. You just straight, straight went for bottom mid. And you died right away. So let's get back ahead and let me talk again about the play here on LR with camo coming up. So, again, <clears throat> good pressure here. You're still kind of sticking around glass. Now you're starting to move up a little bit. You think Camo might be coming up soon. You get this kill. They're two dead. Same thing still applies, though. Same thing still applies. You need to recognize where your teammates are at and recognize there are still two people alive. Now, the numbers are in your favor. It is a 4v2, but if a guy is doing this, him being right there is... Uh, way more of an advantage than just having two people flower door. Like this guy, like think about it this way, is it's a 4v2, but this guy chucks one nade at flower door and both of these guys are one shot. 
And if that's me, like I could probably clean up two people easily. And then now it's now it's a two v two, and we're in like the prime position. You're just kind of out in the open. You're just kind of out in the open right here. You see. So when these picks are going down, you need to kind of recognize if you lock down glass here again, they probably would spawn snipe. Let's see. Let's see where the red team spawns. I feel like they're going to spawn... They might spawn Snipe. I feel like they also might spawn... Now your teammates are running through LR, so they probably do spawn Snipe. Okay, so they spawn Snipe anyway because your teammate actually just took over what you were already doing. And this is also like a redundancy, like efficiency thing, where that teammate that was this Koth guy, that was... um, like Let's watch from his POV for a second, from third person. So... He spawns in blue, and you're on LR. He's wait. He's taking. He's actually so far out there too. Cause this is what happens, and this is what happens in a lot of games. If he probably sees your gamer tag or service tag, whatever, through the wall that you're already here, he might be more inclined to like go top gold right away. And that's just like an efficiency thing, because he sees that you just left that position that you should stay in. Because uh, it's not necessarily your camo. It's hard. It's really hard to get camo from LR to top mid because people could be like this. People could be waiting around benches, posters, S4. It's kind of difficult from this side of the map to actually go for camo, unless you're already prepared or have the right kills. Um, so you probably just staying LR here and then your teammate filling in somewhere else is the better play, because now you're just throwing yourself out there, there's still two people alive, and just like that, you're getting shot in the back, and you're getting shot from up top, right in front of you. And I think they, yeah, and they even get camo. So, I think you also even threw yourself on camo before, yeah, camo, you're on top of camo before it even came up. Like, that sort of aggression, straightforward aggression that you had, is very unnecessary and not something you want to do unless you know what time exactly it comes up and it either a it's an overshield and you might just live because you're just diving right on it or b um it's a camo that you just cannot let the other team have but you guys just got two kills there's no need to like rush it and just throw yourself right on camo like thinking you're gonna like body block camo like just like you saw camo wasn't up and you died right away so you got to keep those things in mind. Again, awareness about like what the situation is and keeping track of everything going on. Like you got to be a little bit more aware of where you're standing and what the what the possibilities are. Still the possibilities. I think we talked about that last time uh as well. How's it going, Mystic? So I think Camo's dead. Yes. Teammates are bottom mid dead. Okay, that's good. So this this is all fine so far. You're helping your teammates bottom mid. You're getting up top. You gotta stop burning the thrust. I've noticed it a lot of times. You gotta stop burning the thrust if you don't need to do it. Especially in a situation like that. Get that guy one shot. This is me. I probably just chase, I'd probably chase him S4. He's probably S4. That's what you should be thinking. Again, the possibilities. You need to be you need to be think you need to be thinking a little bit further ahead on at least a couple things that could happen. So let me give you a little bit better rundown of like why this situation is just rough. Because you might, maybe you don't die here, but um, we'll see. So let me just give you one thing about this. Is you need to be thinking in the sphere of influence again about what's closest to you. There was a guy that was just right here who was one shot. And a lot of people do go up here. You need to think about, again, the possibilities. There could be that guy, S4, getting his shields. Maybe he dropped Ness Ramp. He could be there. He could be jumping up Blue Truck any second. But look at where your aimer's at. You're just looking at the middle of Blue Ramp and looking at, like, dip. Like, look at where your reticle is placed and think about what I just said about the possibilities of likely things to happen. There could be somebody at Blue or somebody at dip. Um, but if that's the case... Those guys are easy to uh, not, like, those are less committal. Like, if you're getting shot from blue, like, you can easily just back out of that fight. If you're getting shot from dip, you can easily back out of that fight. There's this guy S4, and he gets 
first or first shot or two on you, or there's a guy nest ramp who happens to get first shot on you when clambering up, then that spell is trouble for you. But then you're, you're caught off guard by a guy that you just got weak, and you'll see you're down three shots to you shooting him one time. So you're down two shots. He misses his shot, and he still kills you. So, again, <clears throat> if this is me, I probably try to clean up quickly. Because, like, one thing to also keep in mind as well that I want to point out is you're pushing for the trip cap right now. You guys are scoring. So, as long as you are making it harder for them to, like, rebound and get back into the game, that's what's most important. And to do that, getting this kill is going to stagger them even harder than you dying for maybe a cap. Because it's, it's fortunate that your teammate's here, because I feel like he might, <clears throat> he might clean up the kill. But the fact that you die here in this situation is just, it's something you have to be a lot more aware on. 100%. Because he gets cleaned up, and now you guys have a trip cap, but, again, it's, it's the efficiency of it. It's the efficiency of it, where in these games, you probably do have a little bit of a buffer, because these aren't, like, superstar players, but um, against better players, you need to be as efficient as possible, and getting that kind of kill, and then capping is what you want to probably do. Because now they're even capping yard, so it's like, even if it took you an extra second to find that kill, and then go back to nest to cap it, and live through it, that's better than you dying and being on respawn for 8 seconds. Teammates actually stopped the guy in yard. Oh, no, you're just thrusting out. It's fortunate, these guys are kinda, they're in a desperate mode right now. So here's the thing, is if these guys weren't as desperate, just going straight for nest, you probably could've just been dead right there, but... You are still alive top mid, they cap nest. Oh, why'd you turn away from that guy topped up? Why'd you turn away from the guy you were just looking at? He's just shooting you in the ass now. Oh, yeah, you you gotta be... You gotta be committing to what you're already doing. That guy is just there. He is just there. You don't want to walk away from those types of kills. There are certain moments to walk away from things when it, things are bad. When things are bad, you can walk away from stuff. But look at this. You're, you are full shields... And this guy on dip is half shields. So you just need to hit a few more shots. And he's in a bad position where if he pokes out, that guy's already ready. And this guy going top gold would have been ready. So you just shooting that guy off of dip right there could have even allowed you to shoot that guy. And then by the time this guy even starts walking up, you could have been turning around challenging top nest. So that's just like one way to think about it, but like the butterfly effect of like your decision making where... You are already doing something, and it's not that bad of a situation. You don't need to get out of S4. Like, you're instantly turned away. Um, so, you need to um, close out what you started, and then move on to the next thing. Don't just start something, and then turn away from it when you're in the middle of it. When there's no reason to. You're not one shot, there's no reason for you to get away. You don't have camo, you don't have sniper. Um, there's no, there's nothing important in your hands or on your Spartan to, you know, that you need to, like, make sure you do not die right now. Um, because getting that kill probably secures your life, actually, in, like, this type of situation. So that's just a death very preventable. Fortunately, your teammates are still cleaning up, cleaning house, they're doing well, so things are still moving along. Spawn up tram, trip cap is down. Oh, you're just going straight in. You're going straight in. Again, I think you are not thinking ahead when there is something to do. Like, in your mind, with some of these plays, when somebody is capping, you are just, I need to literally put my body in there and attack. But really, you need to attack and then put your body in there. Like, that's how this just works. This is how, again, it's the natural progression that I talked about earlier, I don't know if you're in chat, about somebody talking about OBJ, where some people just feel obligated to just go from point A to point B, which is the OBJ, and do nothing in between, or they don't think about the in-between, and they're just thinking, go, 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 do, 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 and, like, that's it. Like, you need to think about the possibilities. There could have been a guy walking up driveway, there could have been just one guy here ready with a combo, a shoddy, 
There could have been two people here like there are, or another guy like Top Gold just waiting, expecting you like they are. Like, just look at how prepared they are for you right now. People are not stupid. No matter how much people want to say, like, the matchmaking player or whatever rank player, like, people in just general situations, they're at least going to keep up and know, most of the time, some of the just most basic stuff. So, you need to understand, like, this is going to get you killed. Gets you killed instantly. Most preventable death I've seen probably this game. Just started playing Halo, I could see why I got smacked. <laughs> There's a lot of details to high-level Halo. There's a lot. I would say most games have a lot of details anyway, but... Um, at least in the FPS genre, I feel like Halo has a lot of variables, a lot of things to think about. Rather than just go do and shoot with teammates. Damn, nobody contested. That's definitely a cap that should not happen. I need to see... Dude, when will you spawn up? Holy shit. Okay. Is your teammate... What's happening down here? I can't see, like, the meter. But I think, like, kills were already going down. And I think this is, like, a safe time. Especially if you see this guy. So this is what happens. You see that guy right there? You should drop instantly. You could get three shots instantly on this guy and get, like, a three-shot melee. Maybe there's other people in there to... um clean you up afterwards, but you can also tell by how quickly the meter is going up on how many people are, like, if it's going up quick, like, there's more than one person in. But with one person in the stronghold, it takes a while. As you can tell, you're just standing still this entire time, and he caps it solo. That guy should not cap that solo right there. That's just dumb luck, because you guys are not, uh, you guys are not closing in on the kill. Not being efficient at all. You guys end up killing him, but now you have to recap, and things are just kind of this is kind of jank. Uh, but where are you looking? L look at where your reticle's placed right now. And look at where you're looking at. You gotta be utilizing... Again, it's it's a lot of, to do with awareness in general. So, you talked about the damage thing. And I think... One reason why I think I can also do a lot of damage is because I am very good at predicting and expecting certain habits or just general things to happen in the general flow of gameplay. Your prediction prediction skills are 100% your weakest link in your gameplay. Um, so that's something in general you need to try your best to start thinking about. Like, just start asking your like self questions on, like, where can I expect somebody? Where should I be looking? Where should I be placing my reticle and shooting somebody at? Um, because right now you're just getting caught off guard. Like, you're in one of the best positions on the map to get information, but again, just look at where you are looking while up here. I actually need to go back a little bit further. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Did I miss the... I think this is it, right? Yeah, that guy caps right here. So... Besides the point, you should have dropped already to stop that cap. Um, that's just being efficient, collapsing on that. Um, that just kind of sucks. You got to gotta definitely work off of that. But again, like, you're just looking down at the ground. You're not even... <clears throat> so this is what's important, is like, your reticle is placed right here on dip. Where your teammates at, even. There is nothing to really even focus on here in this general area. You need to be looking top gold. You need to be looking into the windows. Like, this is the path that your reticle should be taking is, um, like, A, you didn't need, also one thing to mention about this is, like, you hadn't turned towards soda at all. The entire time you were looking down, you were looking down, looking down, looking down, and then, like, came back up. You didn't even look up while this guy was here because there was a guy on soda that guy was on soda, like, right out in the open that you could have shot. So, you need to be aware of the possibilities. And utilizing this position, being S4. This guy's out in the open. This guy's actually top gold. And then, if you can't 
like this guy's not really showing himself until even then, but you could have been looking around, just seeing a guy thrusting. That that could have been like the freest five of your life, if you happen to have like, sort of the awareness to. Think of the possibilities of, where are people generally going to be at? They're going to be at LR. They're going to be at Soda, Glass, Top Gold, maybe Flower Door or like Blue Window and like Blue Ramp. So. These are very, very important things that you need to always, always be thinking about. And you need to consciously be thinking about all the time. Like, that's, it's not just a one-time thing, a one-game thing. Like, you need to always be thinking about where you're placing your reticle, where are you at, and where could people possibly be at. Because the fact that you were just S4 and you're getting caught off guard by a guy that just, like, jump-thrusted out from blue ramp and took a long time to even shoot you, that's just, uh, it's just slacking, slacking. Again, <clears throat> so, same thing. Um, while you're even walking out here, this is kind of small in this context. Um, so let me just fast forward. <clears throat> let me just show you an even better example of what your expectations are. So look at where your reticle is placed. It, you're looking at the wall right here. That's not accomplished. That's doing nothing for you. Because just think about it. If somebody is blue ramp, somebody is blue window, or, you know, flower door, they're just going to kill you instantly right now. It's more likely that you're going to die right now, but you're not helping your chances by just looking at this wall. So your reticle, when you're about to challenge back out, again, now you're looking at this wall. You need to just be looking, like, straight out. Maybe you want to peek, maybe you don't. Whatever you want to do, like, that's just kind of up to the player, depending on how you're feeling about the situation. But, like, again, look at where your reticle is placed. You're not ready for the possibilities. You're looking right at dip. There, There's n not too much more to say about this particular um, sort of moment right here. Again, same thing. You need to be looking around. Especially since you were just getting shot from, like, blue. Like, this is probably, again, the probability is the numbers game. Where am I most likely to get shot from? Well, where I was just getting shot from is right here. So, my reticle, if I'm walking out, I'm looking basically right through this wall. And I'm ready to just poke out if somebody was right there. Or, you know, top blue. This is, my like, the angle I'm taking whenever I am ready to re-challenge like you are. And just look, so, I'm going to rewind that so you can rewatch it. And you can just think about what I was just saying about reticle placement and how important it is and about how many kills you can get and damage, how much damage you can put down. So look at it this way. Look at where your reticle's at, look where the guy's at, and just think about how many shots you could have gotten to this guy? And I'll just play it frame by frame. So you've been looking, you've been looking. Now you just... That's your first shot. Happens to be a miss. Happens to be a miss. A little close, but happens to be a miss. That was like two seconds. Like one to two seconds of you snapping to somebody. Rather than just being right on him. And look how close you almost kill him. You get the guy one shot and he lives. So just that extra one to two seconds gives you that extra buffer to get that kill there. And many, many other kills. <clears throat> now you're stuck S4. Good kill, though. So that was a little bit better. That was a little bit better. Let me actually rewind again. So this goes down. It's like I'm watching in normal speed. I'm fast forwarding right now, but it's like basically normal speed. So you turn in. Now that was a little bit better. You at least checked like nest lift where somebody could be lifting up. And then now you're like that was the option. Like you either check nest lift or you check ramp. And that's kind of like the 50-50 odds. You weren't just looking straight at the ground. And then, you know, looked at the guy that was walking up. You were looking actually at the lift and then that guy. 
like that just think about it that way is like that's what kind of allowed you to be a little bit better reactive in this situation still alive though oh dude there's so much going on in front of you there's so much going on before you react like just rewatch this I'm gonna turn the outlines off you see that guy on blue truck see so if I see that guy on blue truck I'm not walking fully out and I'm looking straight down but again your reticle is just kinda you're already turning you're just turning directly in and I, I don't know what you're expecting or thinking to expect but and again see where your reticle is following just look at the path of your reticle whenever you poke out here see that guy right there you skim you skim over where he even was and that guy's on your screen while you're turning that guy even then is on your screen to the left and you aren't shooting him peripheral peripheral here's the thing too if you have a better sense of where you're gonna place your reticle that is going to make you so much better with your predictions that is like one thing that you actually can train yourself to think about and you will just get better at anticipating things to happen yeah you didn't see either of them so again uh, I I think it's just a lack of anticipation a lack of expectation you're just kinda kinda going with the flow and now you didn't kill anybody and then you died Field day telling him to stay on top of the map. He actually has been like, you know, S4 a lot of times though. Like in that entire situation, he was just up top a lot. There there could be a lot more to talk about with when to stay up top or when not to, but most of the time I've seen him at least staying on top this game. See that was okay. Got the bottom mid to help your team cap. Oh, dude. Dude. Yo, thank you for the dono. One second. Open that up real real quick. Oh, Bearded Jedi with the $10. Thank you for that. Open up Dashboard real quick so I can actually read the message. <clears throat> the tutoring tip. Thank you, Bearded. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. But again, you're missing it. You're missing it, Kodiak. You're missing the guy right in front of your face. This is why your damage is so low, because you're not shooting him. You're not seeing them. You're not seeing the people right in front of you. Just look at this. Look at this in slow-mo. We're going to super slow-mo this. The guy's right in front of you. You turned. You're about to get backsmacked, aren't you? Oh my god, this guy's choking because he didn't backsmack you. How are you not dead? You could have killed that guy so easily. He's making such a bad play. Making such a bad play. Oh my gosh. Crazy. I can't believe you're alive. Oh, but why'd you go running in? You secured the kill, co the kill though. So, good on you for that. Go up top. Push trip cap, looks like. Yep. Combo up. Okay. Little, little thing that a lot of people, even at higher level, just don't think about. Something that's not as important, like a combo. Is still very important. Combo's disgusting. Pick it up. Think about it. Pick it up. Is shotgun up? Um, shotgun is up as well. Those are two things right next to you. So let before we even see how this plays out, let's just sit here for a second. Acknowledge that combo and shotgun are up. And those two things can get you basically instant kills and make you win 1v2s, depending on how you use it. Let's just see if you die here just because you have a pistol. And maybe you get stopped. Oh, dude. Let's also acknowledge what are you looking at here? If you are in this type of situation, you have to be a little bit more bold with how you are applying pressure. Like, if this is me, I'm probably holding this angle, expecting them to come at me, and of course, I'm thinking about grabbing combo or shoddy here. Um, but you need to be prepared so that you're not down a shot. If you're fully safe, put your reticle in a good spot, like, you know, right over this angle, so that you can watch if anybody jumps up from driveway or if anybody's walking up from BR, and you can still kind of see Light Hall out of the corner of your eye. 
let me actually re rewind just a little bit. Let me just fast forward again so we can kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Yo, what's good, Gypsy? All right. I don't know why your teammate doesn't help you cap <laughs> yard as well. That's not good on his part. But, like, just look at it this way. So, you got in here completely safe. You are completely safe in yard. As of right now, you need to set yourself up so that if anything is to happen, you need to be ready. And that means you need to place your reticle somewhere. Because if you're hiding like this, this is a play to make. How do I put this? This is a play to make if, like, your entire team is, like, coming to you and you just need to live. Like, if you're crouching right here, like, what... Uh, Again, you're looking right at the wall. You're looking straight at the wall. Nothing is going to happen in front of that wall right now. Nothing's going to happen. So, you like the only place you're really going to get pushed from because you just came from blue is most likely going to be light hall, driveway, like yard yard. So, you could maybe... Um, get pushed from blue, but that's super unlikely. Super unlikely, especially in, like, a matchmaking game. Um, but you have to be prepared. Like, just look. You might actually not see that guy, but you would at least see him walking through right now. And again, if you thought to pick up combo, if you thought to pick up shoddy, um, all of this changes, too. If you had shoddy, maybe crouching behind one of these planters is actually a little bit more reasonable, because then you can just, you know, jump thrust at somebody and hit him with a shoddy. But if you're just if you have your mag only like you do, you need to be utilizing the angles to be up first shot. So this death super preventable, and you probably could have gotten this cap if you did any of the things that I just talked about. If you had a better idea of anticipation, placing your reticle, damn, and they even capped something. They capped something right there. Oh no! Why are you not playing? Oh, dude, if you just thrust slid a yard there, you probably could have just... Did you give up? Did you give up, Kodiak? Did you just give up? I can't tell how close that is. I can't tell how close that is, but I'm almost certain that after your teammate gets that cleanup, it's like halfway, and it's like 98 points. Like, look at it this way. Your teammate is in at 97, 98, Okay, it's about to turn 99, but that thing is almost done. If you just thrust slid in, you might actually make it. This is one of those moments you might actually make it, and if you didn't just decide to help your teammate right away, this is one of those things. So, situation. This is a situation where you have to just go. This is one of those times where to throw your body because there's nothing else to do. There's 98, 99 points on the enemy team. Your teammate almost capped something or is almost finished capping something, just go. Everything else throughout the rest of the game, you could have probably thought your way through and had like a sort of plan, a pseudo plan. But right now, just go. They just caught Nest too. Um, you guys have bottom mid. If you help your teammate get that, your other teammates who are spawning hotel in our blue ramp, easily contest that, and then you guys go like top gold into bottom. No excuse. No excuse. You gotta, you gotta just stay in the game right there. You gotta just stay in the game. Look at how much time it feels like passed right there. Look at how much time it feels like it passed. That's not the worst thing, but it's pretty bad. I, I would definitely not be too happy if I'm that guy. Like, I'm just gonna play this at normal speed. You spawn, Just think about if you just thrust slid right off spawn to your teammate right away. Right away. You might actually cap that and then flip the game back in your favor. You got to play for it. You got to play for it. Would have been close? Doesn't even matter. It, it would have been close, and you should have just went for it. Always go for it. Would have been close, and it was probably actually like you, likely you make it. You had a lot of time there. The thrust slide from here to here literally takes like a second, if that. Very close. All right. That was the review.
three takeaways. Awareness. Awareness, awareness, awareness. <laughs>